Hello, I'm Becky Safe. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing and I'll give you my personal opinion about this bad boy, the Adam Audio T7V. Instead of waiting until the end of the video to tell you whether you should get this speaker or not, I'm going to tell you right now, you absolutely if you are considering it, should get this speaker. The quality of this speaker for the price is is unheard of. In this video, I'm going to go over the main specs of the speaker. I'm going to tell you my reasons why I decided to go for this one and why I believe it is an unbeatable at home studio monitor in this price range. I'm going to go over the pros and the cons. And then once I've given you my review, I'll also give you some bonus tips on speaker placement in your at home studio. So when I was getting this particular speaker, it was either going to be this or the Yamaha HS7. And there were some subtle differences, which meant that I decided to go with Adam Audio, especially this part here. So let's talk about the T7Vs. They have a frequency response of 39 hertz all the way up to 25,000 hertz, which is unheard of of a speaker in this price range. My focals from before cost more than this and they didn't even have as wide of a frequency response. If you're new to music production and you don't really know what frequency response is, I'm gonna help you. I will tell you. Frequency response is your speaker's ability to respond to the messages that your computer is telling it to output. And the range at which that speaker can output is telling you what frequencies it is capable of reproducing so that you can hear it at your end. So this one is 39 hertz to 25,000 hertz. That is pretty much covering the entire range at which we can hear. The older you get, the more that you will lose your upper frequencies. But generally from about the age of 18, you can hear around 18,000 hertz. And then when you go down in age and your ears get worn out, you'll start to lose those top end frequencies and you'll come to about 15,000, 13,000 hertz. I'm sitting at about 14,000 on this ear and 13 and a half thousand on this ear. So that's great for me because this is 25,000 Hertz and I can't hear that. And actually no one can hear that. What's the purpose of having a higher frequency range than what you can actually hear? Well, this speaker is actually capable of producing those frequencies. And that means that it is more capable of giving you clarity and definition and detail in the upper end of the frequency spectrum, meaning that you have a much clearer overall picture when you're listening with these speakers. Now, just to briefly touch upon the next series up from this speaker, which would be the Adam Audio A7Xs, they have an upper frequency response of 50,000 Hertz. And why would you want that? Well, that's just going to produce even more clarity, more definition and greater detail in the upper frequencies. But obviously it comes with a higher price tag. This baby is sitting at 158 pounds for one, which if you convert that into dollars, it is still not a lot. I decided to get the T7Vs because at the time I actually had a pretty large room. It was a bedroom and a studio at the same time. It was huge. And I wanted to get some extra decibels out of the lower frequencies. The sevens have a few more decibels in the lower frequencies than the fives. So it's just a little bit more powerful. And if you get these speakers and you find that those low frequencies are a bit too much for your room, there is a switch on the back, a plus minus two dB, where you can increase or decrease the lower frequencies and the upper frequencies as well. There's one for each. The Adam Audio T7Vs have a fairly flat frequency response, but if you want to get that super pristine flat image, I would recommend investing in Sonarworks. It's a microphone. You do a test around your room and then it calibrates your speakers and your headphones so you get an ultra flat frequency response. And it's worth investing if you're going to be getting some at home studio monitors. I'll leave you a link to Sonarworks below so you can check it out. And if you are getting some benefit out of this video, please consider giving it a like. Tiny little like will help 
the channel immensely and I'll really appreciate it. So thank you. So let's go into the fundamental anatomy of this speaker. We'll start at the front. So here we have the front firing polypropylene. I remembered that word. Woof. Woofer. Woof. Woofer. There's far too much enjoyment out of that. Seven inch woofer. It is responsible for your low and your mid range frequencies. There's also a bass reflex port on the back for those extra low frequencies down to the 39 hertz of that frequency response. Those are pretty standard on a speaker, but the beauty about Adam Audio and one of the main reasons why I decided to go with this speaker is this. This bad boy. This little thing. It's made of polyamide film, it's a folded ribbon tweeter, and all of those folds are what make it super special. Now generally what you'll see, if you actually even look at the other speakers that I mentioned, the KRKs and the Focals and a lot of other speakers on the market, they have a traditional cone at the top. This one is folded, which means that when the air is coming in, because the speaker sucks the air in to push it out with the pressure, because of all of these folds, all of the air that gets sucked in gets pushed out with four times more force than if it was a traditional cone. So not only does this tweeter distort less because of the sound pressure ability that it can handle, but it also gives you a clearer upper frequency image because it's able to reproduce that. Now, as a female, I even go to the gym, but this is pretty heavy. You want a speaker to be heavy. You want it to be industrial and able to handle sound. And the build quality of these speakers means that when they're on your desk or stands, they are able to just handle that sound rather than transferring it and rattling it all over your desk. Should we go to the back? Here's the back. We have the balanced and unbalanced ports on the back. And generally, if you're gonna be using these speakers in a studio, you wanna be using the balanced port. That's the XLR one that plugs into your audio interface. It has a grounding additional wire in there, which just means that you get less interference in the signal. And the unbalanced one is just two wires in the cable XLR. Go for the XLR. This gives me such a clear image and as a bass music producer, I need that low end, but I also need the clarity in the upper frequencies so I can hear the distortion coming through on my signal and the hi-hats and just the brightness in general. This thing is, is genius. This is a beautiful piece of creation from Adam Audio. We're obviously gonna get some downsides in a low cost speaker. Most of it is to do with the back of the speaker. Firstly though, I want to draw your attention to the front. There is no LED power light. So you can't see when you're facing the speaker, whether it is on or off. Instead, it's here. So if you want to check whether your speaker is on, you have to go around the back. Next is the rear firing bass reflex port, which is great because it gives you some bass. But unfortunately, if you have this speaker positioned near a wall, what the wall is going to do is it's going to reverberate all of those frequencies back, especially in the corners of your room. So you want to have this speaker quite far away from the wall. And make sure you get some bass traps in the corner so that that bass just gets absorbed and it doesn't start bouncing around. There's no power down inactivity feature. So if you leave the room or you stop producing for some time, they don't actually turn off. You have to remember to turn these speakers off. There is no sleep mode. You'll also notice on the gain control that if you move it left and right, it doesn't actually notch in place. There's no indication as to how far across it's going. So that makes it really difficult to match up the volumes of the left and the right speakers at exactly the same volume. And finally, it's, it's all on the back, really. The power on and off switch is on the back. So really, all you need with this speaker is just to have enough space around the back for you to get there, to see everything, to touch what you need to touch, 
and you also need to have it away from the wall anyway because of the base reflex port. Let me know in the comments section if you're thinking of getting these speakers and if you have them what you think of them and whether you would recommend them to the people watching this video. Just to recap then, do I think you should get these speakers? Well you already know the answer because I told you at the beginning and if this is your price range then absolutely get this speaker. The Ribbon Tweeter is exceptional and it is definitely my favourite studio monitor to date. Now when you get your speakers, where should you place them? Get them on some stands. My desk actually has separate monitor stands so you can place them not directly on the desk and on these things just some foam some foam so that it's not actually on the desk and that means that the speakers when they're producing the sound which is energy it's not vibrating on the desk and adding in additional noise into your music. Place them equidistant from your listening position. Your listening position needs to be in the middle of your desk and they need to be equidistant at an angle from your ears. So you need to line the speakers up with your ears and you need to make sure that they're at ear height, not down here. Obviously the further away from the wall the better because you've got that reflective wall on the back and the sound is going to bounce on that wall and come back to your ears and that's not going to be good for listening and with speakers like this it needs to be even further away from the wall because that bass port is actually on the back. Definitely get some sound treatment. I have sound treatment on my walls, you can see the panels, but you don't have to get things that are super expensive. You can just get those little foam tiles and stick them on your wall and that will make such a difference. You want your room to be as treated as you can get it so that you are just hearing that sound, that pure sound coming from the speakers and not the reflective sound bouncing off the walls. Highly recommend that you get Sonarworks so that you can do that test around your room. All of the links to everything that I've mentioned in this video are below in the description. Before you go though, I just want to shout that my Black Friday sale, a huge discount going on on my website at the moment. If you want to master the art of music production at a huge discounted price, then check out my website also below in the description. Lots of description things in this video. Check out the full directory in the description. <laughs> if you got something out of this video, please consider doing the like and the comment and subscribing. That is it from me guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video and I will see you for another one. Bye!